So I don't usually talk very much about myself, but I want to tell you what's going on right now. I have literally five pages. Oh yeah, there's another one over here. Five pages of 12 point font suggestions that people have written asking to have particular problems solved or particular topics explained, etc. And um, I am presently stuck away from my family in a rented room in a, a suburb, sort of. I mean, a city near Chicago, let's say. And um, so I, I finally have a little bit of time. So I'm kind of just randomly attacking these things and uh, making videos. Um, a particular person, I'd like to dedicate this video to a particular person and everyone who shops at Aldi. I'm in Batavia, Illinois, which is the international, okay, not inter they're probably a German company, right? But the national headquarters of Aldi and milk is 94 cents. That's a 0 0.94 and that's in American dollars. How about you put in the comments how much milk costs where you are right now? That's 94 cents for almost four liters. We use this stupid measuring unit called a gallon here, but uh, that's the price of milk if you buy it in this jug from, uh, from Batavia, Illinois, Aldi. Wow, and uh, Antoinette Oran wrote me asking the following problem. He said, uh, he wrote it in all capitals, so I have to yell. Please do an example which the angle of inclination and the length of ladder are not given, but friction coefficients of both wall and floor are given. There's a weight of the ladder and the zombie is three quarters of the way up the ladder. Help me get the equation for angle of inclination. So yeah, let's do that problem because it sounds really cool. I haven't done a lot of variations on the zombie on the ladder problem. So let's try to get that into the language in which you'd probably see it posed. Okay, so my battery actually died, and so you don't have to watch me write that, whoa, write that stuff. So I was thinking that this would be the way that the problem might be posed. Now we have to talk about the sorts of things that we're going to be given, but I think first we should draw a sketch. This is dirt, and this is a wall. I can't believe I'm making such a small sketch. I don't think you should also. This is probably a Louisville ladder, so it's green, and it's leaned up against the wall, and we're trying to find this angle right here that we'll call theta. The length of the ladder is not given explicitly. It is explicitly not given, but there are some interesting things. We know that the center of the ladder is where the ladder's weight will act. Uh, we can average it, find its center of mass, right? And we know that the zombie is three quarters of the way up. I figured the zombie would probably lose her personification. I mean, its personification at the point of zombification, like personification goes out and zombification comes in, right? That's what your brain does. Um, so, sorry to talk so much about zombies. This is not really a zombie problem. It's a ladder problem and a torque problem masquerading as a zombie problem. So the things that we know, the things that we probably could say that we're being given are going to be listed over here. Let's say that we know the mass of the zombie and we know the mass of the ladder and we know the X Oh, we know where the ladder is going to act. We know the center of mass of the ladder is half of the length of the ladder, and we know where the zombie is also. So I'm gonna, I don't really wanna write those, but we know those two dots represent the known locations of the ladder and the zombie, but they're not really known. They're sort of known in relationship to this angle, which is unknown, explicitly unknown, but we also know mu of the floor, which I'll abbreviate as mu sub f, and we know mu of the wall, which I'll abbreviate as mu sub w. So we know that uh, they've got ladder um, you know, siding protectors on the ladder to make it not so slippery. And we also know that it's got those rubber feet, or maybe we'll go in for even more friction. We'll have those angle parts. You flip them down and it kind of digs into the dirt a little bit. Try slipping that ladder. Well, the zombie did. Maybe it's a really big zombie. Um, but that's not our concern. We're not gonna assign any of these values right here. You could, once you go through the problem, to get some cool simplifications, but we're just gonna leave them as arbitrary things at this point. And now I kind of believe that there are things that we can know. Obviously with the Y and X thing, um, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be looking at net force in the X direction and net force in the Y direction. So Newton's second law is going to give us two equations and we don't really know uh, how many variables are out there. So is two equations going to suffice? I don't know, let's find out. Um, uh, I kind of think there are probably other equations that we could generate, and so I'll, I'll talk about that when we get to it. But let's just start off 
really fast by saying that this distance is x and this distance is y. So my plan is probably to use x and y in my component equations and then when I really want to know that angle I'll just say that I could take the inverse tangent of what is it going to be y over x. Good. So if I get to a point where I can solve all my equations for the ratio of y versus x, then I can take the inverse tangent of it and find the requested angle of the ladder where the zombie causes it to slip at that location. So we're going to get progressively messier as we go through this. The equations start out quite nice and become a little bit unpleasant. I want to tell you about a mistake that I made while I was kind of uh, storyboarding this my first thought I was doing net force in the x direction is mass times acceleration in the x direction. I prefer to use this format and explicitly plug in a zero here in just a little bit, right? Like now. And then this is the same equal sign. So over here I list all the forces that are in the x direction. And my plan initially had been mu sub f times, and then I was going to say the mass of the ladder plus the mass of the zombie. But that's no good because we can't know what this normal force is. This is going to be mu sub f times the normal force, right? This is a force that is to the right, so I'm calling it positive in the x direction. But that depends on what the normal force is. And right now the normal force has to be specified as a variable because we don't know how much force is acting up or down because of the friction with the wall right here. Because that in turn depends on the normal force that's this direction, which probably depends on the normal force that's in this direction. So we definitely have some nestedness here. And we're going to have to be really careful. So my first mistake was adding the masses in here and multiplying by baby G. We just can't go to that step yet. So I'm going to have mu sub F times the normal force on the floor. Okay, and then there's a downward, sorry, a leftward force also, and the only place that comes from is the normal force over at the top. And so I'm just going to write minus the normal force at the wall. So this is a really simple equation. Let's put a box by it, and we could even use that book notation where they're like, equation one. So we can refer to that sucker later. Now I want to take this same sketch, kind of want to have this floating so that I can talk about it whenever I feel like it. This sketch is going to be really useful, so let's get it in a useful place. Ooh, I half ripped the X. What fun. Um, okay, so this sketch is going to be sitting down here. My next uh, discussion is going to be about the net force in the Y direction, and I'm going to claim, as I have done just a moment ago, that the net force in the Y direction is the mass times the acceleration in the Y direction. But again, it's a statics problem, right? So we have something equals zero. Same equal sign here. We're looking at the forces in the Y direction. So first off, there are some forces in the net. You know what? Never mind this first off stuff. I'm going to try in every one of these equations to start from the left and work to the right. So uh, it's, I'm not looking for the easiest thing to do. I'm looking for the uh, most linear presentation so that you can always see where I'm starting and where I'm going. I know that there is an upward force from the ground right here, and that is actually just... Wait a second. We're looking for upward forces, right? Yeah, that is actually just the normal force from the floor, right? That is an upward force and it is acting right there. Then there's a downward force at um, the center of the ladder and that downward force is, well, I'm going to write it negative because it's downward. It's just the mass of the ladder times baby G. And then there's a downward force just a little bit to the right and that's going to be the mass of the zombie times baby G. And then there's another force at this location right here. Now, is that force up or down? Think about a ladder resting on a building. If it's just about to slip, then that force right there, remember this is just about to, so I can say equal things, like, like here where I said the, force of, uh, the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. That means that it's just about to slip. Now the issue is just about to slip, I guess, I guess I'm making a, an assumption here. If it's just about to slip here, it's also just about to slip here. So that puts a constraint on what the two mu values are, but I'm not going to think about that. I'm going to assume that your professor has thought about that if they're giving you this problem. <laughs> that means it's not my problem, it's yours. No, I mean it's theirs, because if it doesn't work out, if it's uh, 
contradicted, self-contradictory problem, then you get to throw it out. So it's not even your problem. It's their problem. Okay, but I'm thinking that as that ladder begins to slip, there's going to be a frictional force that's acting up, and this is just sufficient to keep it from acting up. <laughs> acting up. But that's a positive force. So I add on, and now I'm going to need mu of the wall, whoa, just two wiggles there, times the normal force at the wall. Right? Okay, so this is safe. We got known positive. We got these two things which are givens. We got baby G, which is known. We know the mu, and we don't know this, and we don't know this. So it's kind of an equation um, with two unknowns. And our previous equation had um, the same two unknowns. So that's cool. Let's get ourselves another equation. And this equation is going to be starting to have some interest in where things are happening. So I'm going to shift colors as we go to torque. Uh, what should we do? This is called green. And green equation is, uh, well, let's talk first about the rotation of the ladder about this point right here. If it's just about to slip, then we say that the torques are, in fact, balanced. So I'm going to say the torque, and I'm going to write here about bottom, uh, that's a little awkward, is I times alpha, but in our case, the torque about the bottom is going to be zero. That's the same equal sign again. So now here I'm going to list all the torques about the, <laughs> here are the torques about the bottom. Um, as we're going from left to right, we notice that there are two forces right here, but they cause no torques about the bottom, so we're going to go to this torque right here. That torque is a torque that causes it to rotate clockwise, so it's going to be a negative torque, and that torque is, well, it's uh, mass of the ladder times baby G. That's the force, and where does it act now? It acts, uh, our, our perp for that is going to be half X, right, where X is the distance between the ladder and the wall along the floor. So I write one half X and X, you know, this big capital X this is one of the things that we're trying to find. And our next equation, sorry, our next term as we continue up and to the right, we're going to get another torque that tends to rotate the entire ladder clockwise. So that's going to be minus mass of the zombie times baby G. And we said that we were three quarters of the way up, so that's going to be three quarters of the way to the right also. So that's three quarters times X. Those are two negative torques. Now we've got a positive torque because the normal force, that direct direction is going to be causing the ladder to rotate counterclockwise. This normal force is like the main reason that ladders don't rotate, right? When you put them up against a building, they would have to otherwise kind of like go through the building. But they don't because of this positive torque. Then we're talking about the normal force at the, or from the wall. And that acts, now that acts right here, which in, in terms of, and it's directly to the left. So in terms of our perp, that our perp can be seen as the Y distance. So we've got a Y right there, big capital Y. And then there's also a, a torque from the frictional force. Now the frictional force we said acts upward. So if it acts upward and our axis is right here, then that means it would also cause a clockwise rotation. So that's another positive torque. But of course, we're expecting it to be much smaller. But we don't have to worry about that magnitude right now. But I'm going to say that we've, we're going to have a force which is mu wall, right? Mu wall times the normal force at the wall. And then we have to multiply that by where it's acting. So that is acting at an R perp of X because it acts straight up. So we look at the distance that it is away from the axis along that line of action, which is an X. And we narrowly fit that equation in. Yay. <laughs> um, We've got a three quarters and we got a half. That's kind of cool. Oh, we didn't number our previous equations. We're gonna number this equation three and I have to get the pink back out because some people are very concerned about numbering and coloring and all that. So we got an equation two, we got an equation one, and we got an equation three, and equation four is gonna be so messy that we have to start a new big. Here it is, here it is, where should we go? Uh, brown. And this equation says, oh, right, what do I do next? I've already investigated rotation and X and Y forces, but we put the axis of rotation down here because we didn't know what the normal force was against the floor. So that was really nice. If you look at equation three, you see we didn't have any floor normal forces in there. That's really cool. Now, another thing we could do is we could look at the... Um, 
we could look at the rotation about the center of the ladder. But that only gets rid of a force that we know, so that's not really nice. Uh, we could look right here, and that also only gets rid of a force that we know. But if we look right here again, now that's going to give us an independent equation because it's going to involve terms about the normal force over here, which we excluded from our first torque investigation. So let's do this as our next axis of rotation. So I will write that the net torque about the top, about the top equals I times alpha. And we're going to say, again, it's a statics problem. Again, the answer is zero. So let's identify all the torques about the top. But we're going to work from left to right. So down at the bottom, there are two forces. One of them is the normal force. I find that one a little bit easier to handle. So I'm going to write down the normal force at the floor. Then I have to multiply that by how far out it acts right here. It's acting, uh-oh, uh-oh. So it's acting a distance x away, but if this is the axis of rotation and there's a force upward here, that causes a clockwise rotation, so I need a minus sign right there. That's extremely important. I'm going to write, note that neg. Okay, that's really important to note that that minus sign's right there. And then we're going to have another force. That force is going to be acting inward because the ladder would like to slide out this direction. But friction is going to say, no, no, stay here with me. So that's going to be causing a proper counterclockwise rotation. So I add in, now we've got friction, right? So I'm going to say mu floor times the normal force that's right here again. So I'm going to have Fn floor, but where does it act? It's acting exactly to the right, so I use the r perp of y. There we have this guy, and then we got a mu and a y over here, and then there are these other two torques. Now what are these torques? These forces are straight down, so if this is the axis of rotation, those would both cause it to rotate in a counterclockwise fashion, so I'm going to be adding two more terms here. So I've got mass of the latter times baby g, and that's going to be half of, let's see, half of x, right, because the r perp in that case is going to be half of x, so I get one half x right here, and then I add in mass of the zombie times baby g times, now you might think, and the first time I sketched this I wrote that it was again three quarters, but look how close it is to the axis of rotation now. Now it's only one quarter of x away. Now we actually have four awesome equations, and all you need to do is take these four equations and plug them into one another, solving for the ratio of y versus x. That is the most disgusting, especially because I was working with lambdas just a minute ago, that's the most disgusting y over x I've ever seen. Wow. Okay, that's a lot better. You get yourself y over x, and you've got yourself an answer. There are going to be some constraints on whether it's possible based on the mu values, and that's your professor's problem, or if you're writing a problem, you're going to need to work through it first. Um, but I am so disgusted with these equations. Two of them have four terms, and then there's a, uh, no, I'm sorry, three of them have four terms, and one of them only has two terms. So uh, if I were you, I would write a matrix and solve this using one of those matrix methods because that's gross. Um, one final thing, what else did I wanna say? Oh no, that's it, enjoy your zombies.